Typically, reviewers review Apple technology the day it comes out. Yet, that's not when a lot of people buy their Macs. I was looking at the Mac subreddit on reddit.com when I noticed that a lot of people were considering buying old Macs. What's an old Mac? Well, we're talking about used Macs from 2017 and older with Intel processors. This seemed inconceivable to me as Apple recently made one of the biggest moves in the company's history. They switched to their own processors, Apple Silicon. I was very impressed with the 2020 M1 MacBook Air. At first, I didn't want to get it, but I needed a new M1 processor for testing my apps. I'm glad that I did get the laptop because it's the best computer I've ever had. Macs are not cheap. This one was around $1,000, but the price was competitive with other mid-range laptops. When compared to previously available hardware, the M1 MacBook Air is more powerful than older computers that cost thousands of dollars more. It seemed inconceivable. How can a laptop be more powerful than a desktop? Well, I learned that one the hard way, as my 2018 Mac Mini, which also was around $1,000, is significantly slower than the 2020 M1 MacBook Air. That's why it's so problematic to buy older Macs right now. Intel got eclipsed by Apple's new hardware. Not only is the M1 fast, it's cool. My M1 MacBook Air doesn't heat up like the 2017 MacBook Air. That's why Fluffy hates the new M1 MacBook Air. She can't warm her little paws on the keyboard. <laughs> I suppose that's a good thing for me though, as I don't want cats jumping on my laptops. Although, I have been known to warm my hands with the heat generated from the 2018 Mac Mini. But there is a reality check, as I actually do most of my work from the older Mac Mini. That's because I prefer desktops to laptops. The M1 MacBook Air is a great computer, but it doesn't have all the ports that I need. It only has two ports. Very sad. At least it has a headphone jack. Courage. It also has a fingerprint reader, which is just so convenient. But getting back to the reality check, if you need a Mac for work, but you don't have a lot of money, is it worth it to get an older Mac? That's a tough one, as again, the 2020 M1 MacBook Air is really affordable for a Mac. When this video was created, that computer was on sale at Costco for $850. But if you don't have $850 to spend on a computer, it doesn't matter if it's considered cheap for a Mac. So that puts Mac buyers into three categories. There's the latest and greatest group. They don't care about the cost. They just want the most powerful computers available. Right now, for a Mac laptop, that's the new MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, which is considerably more expensive. Personally, I don't like buying such expensive computers because the price to performance doesn't work for me. Just look at the single core benchmarks. Geekbench rates the Apple M1 Max at 3.2 GHz, 10 cores, with a score of 1,747. But the MacBook Air, late 2020, Apple M1 at 3.2 GHz, 8 cores, is 1,705. That's a difference of 42 points. Inconceivable. Of course, it's a different story for multi-core. That's 12,247 versus 7,411. I'm going to need a calculator for this. That's a 4,836 point difference. Again, I'm going to need a calculator for this. That means the MacBook Air is around 60% the multi-core power of the M1 Max. Yet, it's a far smaller fraction of the price. But thinking more long term, how usable is the 2020 MacBook Air going to be years from now? The hardware on the base model is quite stingy, with only 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage space. I'm imagining that working on that laptop could be a little rough in the year 2026. Yet, are you planning to keep the computer another four years? Back in 2013, 
That was a conversation that I had with a family member who was planning to buy an expensive laptop, but keep it for eight years. I didn't like that idea, as you could split it up. My thinking was that he could simply buy a cheaper computer now and a cheaper computer later, but end up happier. The logic was not just about speed, as I figured the cheaper computer four years from now would be similar to the more expensive one today. It wasn't just about raw computer performance, it was about other changes. What about the ports? What about software updates? What about the display? But again, you have to determine what's most important to you. Maybe two different MacBook Airs over eight years is better than going with a MacBook Pro, but that creates environmental concerns. Two computers means more electronic waste. I'd prefer just to keep using one MacBook Air for 10 years, but that seems unlikely. One, the battery might die. While I keep a strong watch on the battery health, it's a losing battle. The battery will degrade at some point. Replacing that battery can be expensive. That's one of the reasons why you might not want a used Mac laptop. The battery health could be terrible. I have a 10-year-old laptop still active today. The battery is toast, but the computer is still usable when plugged in. Yet, that computer is only in use because it runs Linux. How long will Apple support older hardware with the latest version of macOS? They should do a much better job of letting people know exactly how long they intend to support the hardware. That way, people can make better buying decisions. With Intel CPUs being phased out from Apple hardware, that makes me doubt how long Apple will support that older hardware. Then again, how long will first generation hardware get support? As comparison, the iPad Air 2 just got iPad OS 15, while the original iPad Air stops at iOS 12. Waiting one year made a big difference. Although, waiting could be bad. Perhaps you really, really hate the notch. I'm not a big fan of it. So if I waited in 2020, hoping that 2021 would be better, that notch would have been a disappointment. Although, I do like those colorful iMacs. Something as simple as a color could make a difference. There are many factors that go into picking a computer. But the main question of this video remains. Is the 2020 M1 MacBook Air a good purchase in early 2022? If my Macs exploded today into a fiery ball of molten silicon, what would I do? I probably would be running out to Costco to buy another 2020 M1 MacBook Air before the sale ends. I wouldn't be able to wait a few months for Apple to release new hardware. That laptop has more than enough power for my daily computing requirements. For those few rare moments throughout the day where a progress bar delays my work, I could just take a break, go get a sandwich, or perhaps even exercise. I wouldn't be buying the more expensive MacBook Pros from 2021. Again, that's a personal preference. Maybe you prefer a laptop with a 16-inch display. That's why I like desktops. If I need a big screen, desktops can go way bigger. That's why this moment in time is just so tough to make the right choice. There are rumors of new Macs later this year, just like every year. Yet there's a lot of uncertainty about that. How much will they cost? What will they look like? What new features do they have? Here's another way to look at the problem. If I knew about the 2020 M1 Mac Mini, back in 2018, would I still have bought that older Mac Mini? Huh, that's a tough one. Even with hindsight, I'm still not sure. Every day, I'm using a slower computer, and it's fine for what it does. But at some point, Apple will stop supporting it with the latest versions of macOS, at which point I will likely retire that 2018 Mac Mini, pack it away in a box, or I could put Linux on it, and then pack it away and put it in a box anyway. Look, Linux is great, but I can't make games for Apple Arcade without a Mac. So, here's the good 
and not so good of the 2020 M1 MacBook Air. First, the good. It's fast, like inconceivably fast. How is a laptop able to beat a desktop that is only two years older? Another thing, I like the classic design. It's pretty. I also like the keyboard. If you've used the MacBook Air before, there's not much of a surprise here. It's fairly inexpensive. Now, Macs are not cheap, but the M1 MacBook Air is quite competitive when compared to other Apple gear, or even against other mid-range Windows laptops. I don't recommend paying full price for the M1, though. It is an older computer. As an alternative to Costco, Apple has educational discounts. The problem is that we're past the Black Friday sales, so it's not always so easy to catch this laptop on sale. It's a Mac. To me, this is a good thing. I like the software that is included with a Mac. I like the Apple ecosystem. I also like the Apple hardware. This leads to another good point. Apple Silicon. This laptop is powerful, but it stays cooler than my other Mac. The 2020 M1 MacBook Air doesn't even have a fan. This helps a lot with battery life, which is excellent. Eventually, the battery life will fade, but it should do it more slowly because of the energy efficiency. Over a year later, the battery health is still at 100%. Now, the results may be different for others. As I mentioned earlier, I don't use my laptop as much as my desktop. That's why I don't like used Mac laptops. As an example, I think that the 2017 MacBook Air is a great computer. But wow, that thing gets hot. So, battery life would be a concern. But also, since it uses an Intel CPU, I don't know how much longer Apple will support it. If you need a Mac, you need a Mac. So, if you're trying to save some money by purchasing a used Mac, battery life and the CPU are two big factors to consider. This leads to the downsides of the 2020 M1 MacBook Air. The base model doesn't have a lot of RAM or storage space, and you can't upgrade it later if you change your mind. While you can fumble around with external drives for more storage, that defeats the purpose of a slim laptop. More importantly, this is a hefty Apple tax. They charge a lot of money for upgrades. This is a practice of Apple that I do not like. While I don't need more than 8 gigabytes of RAM right now, a fact that might make a lot of Mac users cringe, the simple fact is that it works for me. But four years from now, that might not be the case. Upgrading is not possible, not by conventional means, not like my old Mac Mini. I upgraded the RAM in my 2009 Mac Mini twice. I also added a solid state drive. That's how I was able to use the computer for almost a decade. So, what's the longevity of the M1? That's something of an unknown. That's also a minus. It would be nice if Apple stated just how long they plan to support this machine with the latest versions of macOS. Another downside is the lack of ports. There are only two USB ports. On my M1, one is totally dedicated to power. This leads to another minus. One of the major downsides of the 2020 M1 MacBook Air is the lack of MagSafe. This is a brilliant addition to Mac laptops as it makes it easy to attach or detach the power cable. The sound of scraping metal in the dark is not a fun thing. To solve that problem, I use a little USB-C magnetic attachment. That's something else to factor in when buying a Mac laptop. Accessories can get expensive. This particular one was cheap. Perhaps it should have its own review. Are you interested in that? You can leave a comment to request it. If there's enough demand, maybe I'll make a video about the pros and cons of this little gadget. Overall, and I'll say it again, it's the best computer I've ever owned. Yet, I don't use it as much as my 2018 Mac Mini. That's why you have to determine what's the best decision for you. This video just presents some things to consider, so hopefully this information helps you out. Thanks for watching.